Hi everyone, it's Jim here from Hobie Fishing. I'm uh, here with Simon Morley, uh, back again for one of our lovely little interviews. But uh, Simon, welcome to our chat. No worries, thanks Jim. No Glad worries. Yeah, uh, it was pretty easy to get you tied down for this afternoon. It's not like you had much on. No, nah, no, nah. a couple of leaders and that was it. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> so we're, we're here up at the... Um, oh, Nambucca. Up at Nambucca, thank you. <laughs> we're here at Nambucca and uh, we're here for the round three of the Hobie Kayak Fishing Series and you're day one leader. How do you feel? Um, I don't like leading day one. Yeah. I'd rather be the, the fox who gets to chase, you know what I mean? Yeah, yep. Day one lead, but I suppose, you know, a lead's always handy because you can just go out and relax tomorrow. Well, that's the way I look at it. If you I go out and get three fish tomorrow, I'll be really happy. You've got about 300 grams, have 300 you? 300-odd grams in front, so that's a... That's a, a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's fish, a legal that's fish a, here. That's a legal fish here, so <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that, actually. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'll take it. Great, great. All right, so... The reason we've got you here is just to ask a few questions. Now, first off, where did your, where did your fishing story start? Uh, definitely from my dad. He's a, well, used to be a professional fisherman. So, you know, lobsters, beach hauling, sharking was pretty cool. Some really crazy experiences going out sharking with my old boy. And yeah, a lot of beach fishing with my dad when I was younger, you know, go catch sandworms and catch whiting and bring them off the beach. And then from there just developed into throwing lures around I suppose and haven't looked back. Yeah so uh, you're a Illawarra, you're a bulleye? Yeah yeah, bulleye in, uh, in the south coast in Illawarra there. Yep. 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 And um, for work you're a miner? Yeah yeah so I work at um, Mount Kembla Dendrobian coal mine. Um, yeah coal miner, I'm a fitter underground so fitter underground that loves fishing and outdoors. <laughs> and a very flexible work timetable as well as a very loving and flexible uh, more wife. of a flexible wife I think than hey Brit <laughs> compared to work works because I've been put on um, full time now with the pit it's yeah it's a little bit tricky getting time off yeah have to sort of get in early otherwise I don't get it at all I know you used to get the calendar and just basically yeah. go in and do, 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 do. straight away yeah. otherwise I won't get it you know what I mean yeah so, no nah, it's pretty it's pretty cool pretty great place to live too so yeah. Um, your favourite place to fish in Australia? Um, there's a fair few. You know, you've got your Victorian rounds, Bem, Malakuta, Marlow's a pretty cool place, but then you've also got Foster, George's River in Sydney. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a place that I fish, you know, nine times out of ten I'll go to George's River. It's 40 minutes from my house, so yeah. I call it my local. Yep. Um, yeah, this place is pretty cool though, it's, <laughs> as it's turned out today. So. Yep, yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask you that same question tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I'll be kicking dirt. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, there's there's heaps of places. All the places we travel, I love to fish. Like Gold Coast, it's another yeah. great venue, and yeah, if it, you know, the fish turn on up there, it's fantastic. So yeah, the 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 atmosphere here is really cool. We've got uh, people. You know, we're all basically taking up all the front row of cabins here. Yeah, that's you right. You guys are camping. You're in a you're in a swag that wide out the back. Yeah, yeah. Um, a, away from the slushy water that from the 130 mil of rain they had the other night yep. here. But um, no, it's all good. Like I said, the water is right there. Like yep. you can't get any better than this. And we're all congregated in the one area. So there's all laughs and a few beers going on at the moment. It's pretty fun. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Tonight we get a feed put on by yeah, Neil Cedric. Mortgage Club and Cedric. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> um, when and where was your first kayak fishing event? Uh, Narrabeen. Narrabeen Lakes. 2011. 2011. I, yeah, I only noticed, well, I only started getting to uh, Hobie kayak fishing then. Uh, bought my first PA and, yeah, just looked online and didn't really know anyone doing the tournament scene at that stage either. So I just, yeah, just entered and rocked up. And the guys were so nice straight away, come introduce themselves. They were going, oh, you're going to the grand final. I'm like, this is my first round. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they were like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, but, you know, I, I, well, I didn't do brilliant on that, that weekend, but yep. it's all a learning curve. Yeah. yeah. That's how, how we get where we are. Every, every waterway is different and every day is different. So you just got to fine tune your techniques and hopefully, yeah, put it back together. Um, what keeps you coming back? to these fishing series camaraderie for sure yep. like and the mates that i've made through these series is unreal you know doing it 11 years now i think yeah it's cool friends in queensland you know all over new south wales down in victoria 
South Australia. Yep. You know, WA. It's yeah, it's crazy where this place, this um, sport takes you. So it's pretty cool. It's it's led us to a lot of places. All of us, in, myself included. You know, with China, USA. Yeah. Sweden. Yeah, it's, it's insane. That's right. Um, the places you travel. Um, your favourite memory at an event? I'm going to go with my win at FEM in 2015. Just, I just had one of those you know, epic weekends where I found the fish late on the first day and went straight back there the second day and they were still there. Yep. And I had my bag like, I don't know, 7.30 that you know, well, I was never going to upgrade. No. It was one of those days <laughs> yeah. where I just paddle around with my well all day. Hey guys, <laughs> how you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it time to go in yet? Yeah. <laughs> it's just one of those days. So, yeah, definitely that win. I was um, contracting at that stage, out of work. Um, so, yeah, that pay packet I got from Bem that weekend. That would have been a good pay packet. Yeah, it was then. over two grand. So, yeah. it was definitely handy in the bank account. And yeah. the missus liked it for that reason. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, how many times is it? Now, now, I mean, you started fishing in 2011, so... You've done a lot of events. Yeah. Oh, I would hate to count the number of events you've done. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you, to tell the truth. <laughs> we probably could, but uh, Angler of the Year twice. Yeah. And yeah. you're currently leading Angler of the Year uh, at no, the moment. Don't box me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just, I don't know, persistence, mate. Like I said, I've been doing it for 11 years now. and But, but it's only your best five. It's not like it's your, you know, because you've done... Of the, you know, once upon a time we used to do 16 events, now we're doing like yeah. you know, 9 and 10, nine but it's 10. your best 5. Yeah, that's right. But it's your so, best 5, so you're still coming out on the top of the best 5. Yeah, I know, I just, I don't know. <laughs> no. Just got to, yeah, if you, you, you know, if you can get to at least 6 or 7 rounds, at least if you get 2 bad rounds, you can, throw you know, them throw them out and hopefully, yeah, upgrade and get some good points that way. Yep. And yeah, it's definitely worked. Uh, 2019, it was pretty tight at the top, as you know, and yeah, managed to come away the win at Marlow, which yep. sealed it for me. So, yep. yeah, can't complain about that one. Like I said, I was pressing the buttons, and I, I was like three points or something. It was it was minimal. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. was bugger all in it, and, and then, I, I pretty much had to win to take it out. That's right. And, yeah, managed to you know jag two donkeys, one on the first day, which took big brim, and then the second day it took him, you know, an even bigger fish, and yep. yeah. Marley's pretty pretty impressive as a fishery, especially oh, when I've, you can get to the places you guys were. Yeah, at. I've fished that place heaps of times. It's a great fishery, and yep. you know I know the fish are in there, but to finally put it together for a weekend was pretty cool. Yeah, like yep. I just had this bank to myself, was going back and forward, and I literally didn't leave a hundred metre stretch. I'd yep. go up, come back, go yep. up, come back, and then the fish would come on on one drift, and then they'd shut down for an hour or so, and then they'd come back on. Yeah. Yeah, so it was it was cool, and everyone left me alone, so I was cheering. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, further abroad, so we're moving international now, how many fishing worlds have you been in? Uh, competed in three fishing worlds. So yeah. the first one was Amsterdam. That was a pretty mad event, I have to yeah. admit. It was awesome. Great experience too, you know, flying over the Aussie team, and it's just the hype, you know. It, yeah. You get pumped. It's like, yeah, it's like next level, that sort of stuff. And, yeah. Um, yeah, then I managed to make the Sweden team, which is pretty cool. Same species, but, you know, you, you can't take it all. I missed out on going to America, which sucked because I really, really wanted to go to America. <laughs> that was the Louisiana one? Yeah, the yeah. Louisiana yeah. one. Yeah, that one just looked cool in the swamplands, fishing around there. Redfish. Um, yeah, and then um, Gold Coast. Was that yeah. 2019? 19. Yeah, middle of the year. Middle of the year? Middle of 2019? I'm thinking so. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> My memory shot. <laughs> There's been a few. Well, yeah, it's and also I, been a big day. Yeah, and yeah, I only missed out by, you know, a smidgen to Andrew Deeth. Well done, Deeth. He's still a champion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, you got me. Uh, like, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> get out of me spot, Deethy. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, yeah, yeah, you're going up to Gold Coast just for a normal um Yeah, yeah, normal I'll be back up round. there in July for this round. That's, you know, who doesn't want to get away from... Down the Cold. coast where we live together. We're lighting Queensland. fires and then we travel up the coast and all we're of a sudden. We're in 40s and singlets. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> like right until you go to bed. Yeah. And it's yeah. not like at home we're freezing. I'll talk to my wife and she'll be, oh yeah, we're lighting the fire. And I'm like, oh, yeah. all right, good luck. Yeah, Mrs. <laughs> has got the heater and the aircon cranking to heat the house up. And I'm yep. up there in shorts and t shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I mean, what's the 1200 or 900 kilometres difference? That's all it takes. Yeah, it's 10 hour, 11 hour drive. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Um, so, what other countries say you've travelled to? You did Amsterdam. Amsterdam, Sweden, 
uh, worlds in Australia. Um, China is another. done can yeah the can the can tournament that we do over there um, yeah that that itself is another pretty awesome experience like yeah. I said we um, get treated like kings over there so you go over there. as team Australia team Australia yeah yep. we all work together it's pretty cool like I said yep. we all have um, team meetings yes yes Sid, I remember Sid's that the captain he prints out the map you know, um, laminates it so it's waterproof. Yeah. It's awesome. It's oh, got all the marks board, on board there. Boardroom meetings we yeah, used to have. We had meetings. a few nights. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's sensational. That's such a great tournament because we we're all working together. So even one Aussie smashing it, he can come into the room and go, guys. You know, I'm finding them here. This is in what this I'm depth using. Of water. This is what I'm using. Let's go get them. You know. Yeah. And and that's why you do work as a team in that event. Yeah, yeah. It's a really. Yeah, it's, it's a, unreal. It's a different. I went over in 2013 and and was a part of the team there and. Yeah, it was really, it was awesome. Yeah. We all sat in that room. We, like you said, we had the map yeah, out. Shared and it's information. All this, 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 you know. Yeah. So you can put your own game plan together, but then, you know, they also have little sneaky things. If you don't have any fish, you leave your live well lit up. Yeah. Yeah, it's just cool. Oh, so, that's right, because you're not allowed to communicate. You're not allowed to communicate, so you can't talk, but if you paddle past and you've got your live <laughs> lit up and someone's on the fish, they might go like this <laughs> and then put their hat back on. And <laughs> it's pretty cool, like, but there's uh, no talking. It's just uh, yep, hand, yep. not hand signals, just I did some, you know, start little subtle movements that, yeah, there's some fish over here, come, come get into them, you know what I mean? Because yep. everyone wants to see the Aussies up on the table, you know, yeah, up yeah, the top, absolutely. up the pointy end, definitely. So but you'd feel like a rock star when you walk down to that big auditorium and you've got about 10,000 oh, people. It's crazy, that thing. Yeah, the auditorium there is full of Chinese people. They've got what, flags and, you know, streamers and stuff. Yeah. yeah and, and, the, and you're a rock star. Yeah, definitely. You're a rock star. Yeah, you get to sit down the front, watch that full display and all the dancing and, yeah, yeah it's unreal. Yeah, you're the row behind all the top politicians. Yeah, exactly right. So, <laughs> doesn't yeah. get much better, does it? No, no, it's pretty cool. Um, so back to the Hobie events back here in uh, in Australia. Yep. You do a lot and you probably see a lot of people come into the events that um, we, we offer the first timers and stuff like that, but other people can just come in and back themselves and pay their entry. But what advice would you give to anyone that, is looking at getting into the Hobie kayak fishing. Definitely come have a go. Like we're all we're all just a bunch of guys, you know, and you know, some of us may look scary if you look at Scotty Loving, he's <laughs> eight foot tall and like a beast or yep. you know what I mean? But no, definitely jump in and have a go, you know, ask questions. Definitely ask us questions. Like the guys that have been doing it for a while, myself, Samo, we're you know, we're happy to yeah, you know, point you in the right direction. We can we can tell you what lure you're using, but you still got to catch them yourself. That's the hardest part. That's very so, true. Yeah, I've this weekend alone, I've put a few people onto the the right lure, but whether they can use it how I use it is a different story. So. Did you did you help James Kilpatrick get his first fish today? I did. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and I was trying to wave him up because me and Tony stopped on another school and they were just lit up. We must have caught our bag three times over yep. and James was still on one fish and I was trying to get his attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was too busy just like focused trying to get another one. So Because you'd Sorry, already James. given him some advice and, and said I, this is what to use. Yeah. And so I told him at the bump tub, I said look, you remember where you've seen us? I'm like, yeah. I said, you know, go up here next to this channel marker, you'll find another school there tomorrow and yep. they're actively feeding. Yep. Yeah, he's like, all right. That's in my head. I know where I'm going. So, well, no, great. Yeah. Uh, well done. No, well done. It, you know, the more people we get to weigh in fish, the the better it is. You know? And the more competition it is. The more love fun. competition. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. Uh, at the end of the day, you are very competitive, but you're still a nice guy at, at the events. You know, people come up to you, you laugh, and you can hear Simon Morley laughing from a mile away. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But I do no. have that Pacific laugh on me, don't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. We heard another oh, Galar up there before. We could. Tell yeah, we, yeah, that's right. We get to pick up who's last what. And <laughs> that's it. That's it. Um, yeah. This event uh, here. Mm -hmm. What have you been using? What's what's working? Um, so yeah, I'm I'm looked after by Peter Nord from Hurricane Lures. Um, yeah, Pete's brought out a selection of. Um, soft baits so sprat 65s and sprat 75s so the 65s uh this is the motor oil this has been absolutely smashing them today um yeah just a slim profile with a paddle tail that one 65 oh. mil long 
and uh, flex tech material so super stretchy um, yeah but the eyes that just don't like a lot of plastic lures like yeah, this yeah if you squeeze them the, light the eyes off. will pop off yeah these ones I don't know how Pete's done it but you've done a great job Pete and they, they definitely stay on so it isn't, it's a funny a funny fact that you lose an eye off some of these lures that just don't yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, is it the angle of it? Are the is fish looking or? at that eye, or is it just in my head? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, so that's the 65 model, and then he makes a 75 model with a like a fork tail. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, so like a minnow style. So the paddle tail, you feel that little bit of a thump. Yeah, through the a little line. bit of a, you know, get the fish excited, and this one, more of a like a prawn fling bait imitation. Yeah, okay. Sort of sort of thing, and that's. Definitely what I've been catching. So you found fishing. you found a plastic spot here at the moment for you? Yeah, I've I tried hard bodies, so I've got an array of hard bodies down here as well. Um, I don't know, it just seems they seem to be off the edges. Well yep. I found them off the edges, so normally I throw like the fat thirty seven in the natural prawn colour. Was it the fat thirty seven that you fished at Marlow? Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, that colour, but in the shallow. So ah, yeah, okay, yeah. Because right you're fishing there. right up. Yeah, the they edge. were right up on the edge. Where here, yep. I found them. They seem to be off the edges. You know, in that uh, two metre range. So geez, I like your hooks on that one. Yeah, it's been used a few times. <laughs> oh, this is the one that's got all the scratches. Yeah, it's oh, got, bite, it's got bite marks yeah. all the way over the lure. <laughs> Does work this colour? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah. So normally, I'm like. I'm a hard body man through and through. Yeah. And yeah, Pete's brought these out. Um, another teammate, Troy Parsons, he's, yep. yeah, he's been helping Pete develop them. Um, and I've been fishing with Troy a, few, a fair bit, so he's been showing me how to work them and how to use them properly, and it's definitely paying off because I'm throwing them more than I'm throwing these these yeah, days, okay. which is crazy. Like, yep. before I'd never pick a, a soft plastic up, I'd just go straight to a hard body. Yep. But yeah, I just found that a bit more subtle, you know, I don't know whether the rattle's actually spooking them or, or what, but um, yeah, it's definitely a plastic bite this weekend. Yep, yep. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Well, hopefully uh, your form from today will continue. It's a nice little lead. Um, you're yeah. on the fish. Yeah, I, oh, I, yeah, just hope mm. they're um, feeding the same way they were again today. You got your bag early? No, so I, I did have a plan to go straight to the rock wall and got the better of me looking at the islands on the way down and yep. I appeared off and the boys went straight down and they got, oh, we had our bag by eight o'clock and I didn't see a fish till eight thirty, nine o'clock, yep. you know, when I eventually went to the wall and I said, oh, this is what all the hype about is about the rock wall. So yep. I just persisted and, you know, leapfrog guys and they leapfrog me and just, yeah, just don't let them get in your head and just do your own thing. and. Yep. Yeah, the fish just come. Keep working it. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, a little bit of a different tide tomorrow. Forty-five minutes later. Yeah, it'll, it'll actually be better, I think. I think so. It's gonna oh, it's gonna me. open up the the area for a little bit longer, especially the guys that are up the top. That that dirty water really did push through. Yeah, yeah. You could see it definitely down the front when it when it started to run. It, yep. Yeah. It just got putrid. <laughs> uh, the area has had massive impact by flooding. Um, floods yeah, that sure have has. Broken records or higher floods than they've had in nearly 20 years. So, yeah. Um, and then also on Thursday, they had another roughly 130. Years, yeah, so. the poor buggies have been getting smashed up here, definitely. Yeah. But, you know, this place is still fishing like off its head. It is. I it must is. have caught 40 brim today. Now, <laughs> now, but oh, there was something else you told me recently. You're not really a river fisher. No, I'm. Yeah, the, yeah, you're like, you're I like went and talked to the and... boys this morning and like, how do we fish rock walls? And like, you got to tie this, this and this. And I went, okay. And then I just went down there and did my own thing anyway and it works. So yep. oh, yeah, I, I love fishing flats. I'm a flats fisher for sure. And Absolutely. like, there's a few flats in here, but the fish aren't on it. Yeah. So you got to concentrate on that deeper water, you know, that just off the drop offs and stuff like that. So, yep. but definitely that um, incoming tide in the morning because it's i think it's a one seven or a one eight and the, the, the swells up as well so it's it's you know it's pushing in you can tell halfway down this morning paddling down and then you hit that tidal line <laughs> like, and it's like someone put the brake on the kayak like, what what happened there you yeah, know what i mean yeah. And, so yeah definitely helping like you organizing these events around the the tides is sensational so yeah we tried it. I mean, Foster's the one that I really don't want to get to, right? Because <laughs> we're so close. But yeah, a lot of these rounds, it's I, I have it's this. Tide dependent. Uh, for sure. Yeah, 
I have this little uh, little regime that I've got where I look at where when I nailed it, <laughs> I got the tide yeah. right. It's like I was out. It was out by two hours on that day. All right, I have to make sure in the future I plan it that way. And yeah. a lot of it happens like that. It's, yeah. it's not. You get a reader that's right at the entrance, and you know you you might have your event halfway up. And yeah, things but change. us as fishermen, you know, we we have to work that out too. You know, take yeah. that in consideration. Definitely, if we, you know, if you're going to fish up river, river. Yeah, do it while the tide's pushing up there and then maybe move down the front when it turns around. It's it's definitely, like, it's not all up to you. All the anglers have to know how to, you know, start to read what the system's doing. I suppose that's what you do on pre-fish. Like, yeah. I don't usually fish that hard on pre-fish. I'll just paddle around and see what the system's actually doing and, you know, how long the water stays on a flat or, you know, just eyeing off stuff that I think that, oh, I reckon fish will hold on that tomorrow while the tide's up and yeah yeah so yeah. one question that probably wasn't ready to ask until you sort of led me this way but um when you're researching a new fishing venue like here at Nambucca Heads yeah what do you do um so in New South Wales is a app six or maps. a thing six maps yeah it, the detail on that thing is yeah. ridiculous so yeah. yeah six maps google earth Google Maps, just you know, flick it on satellite, and so you do your research. Your research is your your eyeballs checking out maps. Yeah, but then I'll also, you know, I'll put my weather station, you know, on my, my app at this area, so I can see what the tides are going to do, what the wind's going to do. You know, mm -hmm. is there going to be like a, a late subly change where I might get a, a bite window before that wind hits, or you know, yeah. just gotta yeah, try and put yourself in the right places at the right time. It's I always say it to everyone it's about making decisions and making the right ones so yeah. sometimes you get lucky like today i made the right decision and went there at the right time and the fish were feeding so yeah. i had a yeah an hour window where i was just banging them stupid and you know guys are paddling past going i've only got one and i'm like oh, keep going <laughs> <laughs> don't stop here <laughs> nothing to see nothing Move to along. see here that's right yeah so oh cool yeah all right simon but I... you learn that stuff you know over yeah. years and years and you know, all the guys that are just starting, all I can say is just keep casting. It only takes three casts, man, and yeah, if you cast in the right spot and the big dog's there, <laughs> you're laughing. Yep, yep. The rest mm. of it's just wind. That's it. Net. Don't don't overthink it, as my wife tells me. Yeah. Just go. Great fishing. advice, Britt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Britt. <laughs> it works every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, lovely. All right, Simon. Well, um, we we have to let you get back to doing some leaders yeah i got a couple of leaders to tie and yeah organize my stuff before it gets too dark and yeah dig into that food that neil supplied and cedric's cooking so i can't wait no worries <laughs> uh simon thank you very Thanks, much Jim. for your time no, i appreciate, appreciate it. that awesome and uh good luck tomorrow good luck for the rest of the year uh yep. currently aoy <laughs> first mate cool. yeah no nah. let's hope i can stay there let's do it yeah all right thank you thank you uh, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, we'll continue to try keeping uh, so people like Simon having interviews like this and uh, keep them coming. So thank you from Jim at Hobie Fishing. Thank you. All right, without further ado, Simon Morley needs 1.35 kilos to take out the win. Come and, on. And we have easy done. 1.53 overall weight of 3.8 kilos and your round three winner, Simon Morley.